along with something to talk about tonight. We've got uh, Lieutenant Governor Ray DiNorio. He's going to be joining us at the table. We're going to be talking about something really big happening in your neighborhood that is going to ensure uh, your safety, the safety of your family, and the safety of the people around you. And if you don't know the people around you, this new program is going to make you want to know the people around you. That's all ahead here on Something to Talk About. Good evening and welcome to Something to Talk About. Uh, you see who's next to me and I guess you'll have an idea as to what we're talking about. The acting governor, Ray Tenorio, uh, in with the, this, the, us uh, this evening. And James Turbio also yes. joins us at the dinner table at King's Restaurant in Timuni. Uh, they always bring us fruit. I hope you don't mind that that's oh, fruit. fruit. Uh, and then we got the chaser platter, which is really, really good. How do you like that that uh, mozzarella cheese oh, stick? So, yeah, I know, right? Too tempting for me to, I know. to pass up. It's so delicious. King's so you're so good. Okay, I'll, I'll put this in front of you, but then James and I will sure. be snacking yeah, on we'll that, so I hope you don't yeah, mind it if we reach over you. I have you. to get past the fruit to get yeah, to yeah. the cheese. That <laughs> well, you have been out campaigning quite a bit for the Neighborhood Watch program, right. sure. and, and people are asking me, wait a minute, isn't the Neighborhood Watch program already a program that's been in place? I, yeah, it is, but this mm. is more of an enhanced Neighborhood Watch program. Sure yeah? it is. Well, you know, we have a rise in crime, and thanks for the opportunity, Patty. You're really welcome. appreciate it. Um, we're really trying to get the citizens involved. I think a lot of residents, mothers, fathers, you know, grandparents, children for that matter, they want to have a safe home. And we have to look after each other. You know, nowadays you've got air con, a lot of windows, mm. you know, the shades are drawn, and we're not as much as uh, in touch as maybe we used to be back in the 1970s, maybe the 1980s. Mm. So. I'd like to get people a little bit more tuned in on what's going on. So if you see a car uh, across the street from you, it doesn't look like your neighbor's car, you know, take your smartphone and take a picture, you know, mm -hmm. but um, make a note on a piece of paper or something, just in case, you know, time, date, location, license plate, what the guy look like, you know, that kind of information is helpful. But yeah, do we have neighborhood watch? We've had it since the 70s. Yeah. You know, we've had a little bit of success here, a little bit of success there, but you know, one person, one house, one business at a time, that's how you grow a program, and that's what we're going house to house. The house to house thing is a different thing, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like neighborhood watch and yeah. then some. Sure. I mean, to have the lieutenant governor and maybe the chief of police standing at your front door is a little bit daunting. You feel like <laughs> really like you didn't pay your taxes and and you're in trouble with the law. But but what is you know what's the idea behind actually going door to door? You know, talking to people at their homes. Come on in, Bernard. Bernard's got your sure. food, by the way. Uh, Salmon and brown rice yeah. uh, for Ray Tenorio today. I'm trying to eat better. Yeah, yeah. When, when you go to a house and you meet with someone, you they. Don't don't just talk about neighborhood of wires. They talk about their street lights that's not working, or maybe a pothole on their street that they want to get fixed, or a problem with you know uh, another aspect of their life that we might be able to help with. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we're all part of the same community. Um, but dealing with a street light that's out might make a difference in making sure that the kids feel comfortable walking at night, or you know, mother or father feel good about exercising without having to worry about being in the dark. Um, you know, talking to people face to face, you really get a feel for what's happening and how to maybe uh, reach out to them on a very retail basis because we can go on create you know videos put it on TriVision or some other uh, electronic medium we can YouTube it or Facebook it or Instagram it but that's not the same as talking face to face and getting to know what really bothers them or you know who might be someone that you know they're they're drug people using drugs in our community mm. or maybe drug houses and someone will say you know what there's a lot of people going to that house over there I, I think there's something going on and you know the police officers they want to know but we have to help them because they can't be everywhere and maybe by talking to them at their front door whether a lieutenant governor because I've been a cop for a long time I've walked the streets as a politician but the reality is this is about getting engagement with the community by directly soliciting their support directly asking them to come to a meeting and being part of the solution are you asking them to come to the meetings, or you're sort of getting an idea as you're standing there as what their concerns are? Oh, you in, get, a, in, get yeah. an idea as you're uh, in the meeting or yeah. even before. Because, you know, we went to Bergen Heights, and Ray Gibson, of course, is talking about the fact that they have a little WhatsApp circle right. that's working within their group. And the Neighborhood Watch program is effective because those people in that community, that little section, they're watching out for each other. Now, how do you make that, that ripple in the pond grow? outside of that little area mm. to the area beside them. How do we get them to know each other? You know, uh, AJ Balahaja had a really good recommendation. He says, why don't we do a challenge? Like you go two houses to your right and two houses to your left and 
two houses across from you maybe to get to know who those people are. Just oh, that. Okay, now see that's <laughs> that's a lot for some people. Right. You know, it's not like you're right about it. It's not like in, back in the day when you lived in a house for all of your life mm -hmm. and your neighbors seemed to be the same people. But mm -hmm. now it's it's really kind of it's different. Very different. There's a lot of transient neighborhoods sure. in, in, in Guam. Yeah. So sometimes it, when the next guy in the next door moves over and you're not necessarily good friends, right. uh, it, it takes a lot out of one person to extend a hand mm -hmm. you know, over the fence. But yeah. if I see you, so let's say I move into your neighborhood and, yeah. you, know, and you come over to my house. Remember like the proverbial oh, lady bring, with a pie, Oh, right? I did. Oh, I, I did for my neighbors. Right? Yeah, sure. Right. So you, by you reaching out to me or vice versa me reaching out to you say by the way patty uh, if they're you're working and you know i know you're out a lot so if i see somebody at your house or see some kind of smoke billowing or something something looks suspicious or i have a truck with a couple guy couple guys in the garage of your home uh, they look suspicious and call you up. They may turn out to be your nephews just picking up a barbecue pit, but they may turn out to be burglars. So yeah, that, if I have yeah. your number, I might be able to reach out to you. Yeah. But we have to get to know our neighbors a little bit better. Well, I think it's a big investment in safety when you go to your neighbors just on that premise. Basically, mm -hmm. listen, we all live in this little circle right. of this cul-de-sac, and there's a possibility that somebody would be going into your house, and there's some that might come into mind. So let's just sure. figure out a way that we could protect. We may not have to be friends, but let's just figure out yeah, a way to protect the, the neighborhood. Uh, James, what is your uh, what is your involvement in the program? Um, well, basically, I'm, I work under the Lieutenant Governor's office, of course, uh, focusing now on public safety. And so, through uh, the office, we're helping to organize. And so, you know, we mentioned the cannabis thing. That's really just stage one of, 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 of the full plan. And so, we go out there, gauge interests, talk to the people, invite them to the meeting, and then have the meeting as, as uh, phase two. Mm. And there, we, we really get to see who really wants to be involved mm -hmm. in the program. And from there, uh, we get a, a, get a list of people that really want to be the leaders of, of that particular neighborhood. And mm -hmm. from there, we're going into the next stage right now, and that's where we're at, and setting up the second meeting uh, with these potential leaders, uh, block captains, if you will, uh, the people that will start the phone tree, the WhatsApp group, uh, like mm -hmm. the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, mm -hmm. and set them up and, and get them the training that they need, and then once they're all set up to, uh, and ready to go, we can move on to the next place. Okay, so how, Barragata was your first meeting so yes. far, right? How'd That's that right. go? How'd that yeah, go that day? It was day? really good. It was excellent. And, and a lot of people like in the Barragata Heights group, another area in Lejang, you know, they want to have individual meetings for their group because I think that's the, the better way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a little niche or a neighborhood watch program in a apartment building or something in a, in a small subdivision, people who want to look out for them uh, themselves and their neighbors, you know, this have them call the Guam Police Department or my office, 475-9380, or you can call myself, 482-1432, and, and we'll help you to set that up because we want people who want to have the program, but we also want to go into the neighborhoods where you might have a little bit of participation. We might be able to put up a sign that says, neighborhood watch, watch out, we're watching you, kind of thing, or something like that, so that if a criminal were to go into that area, they probably might turn around and go somewhere else because the odds are those neighbors yeah. are looking out for them and they'll report their license plate and that might be just enough to stop them. There are though, I mean that ideally will work in a neighborhood where people are willing to talk to each other, but mm -hmm. there are pockets inside these neighborhoods that are a little more off, uh, mm -hmm. off the main route. And, and areas, and you probably know where these trouble areas are, where mm -hmm. you know you're sort of walking into a neighborhood yeah. that's already got got problems. Sure. It's a little hard to start a neighborhood watch program when everybody's surprised. a criminal. No, well, <laughs> um, I, I think this generalization, there, there are areas where the preponderance or the likelihood of having criminal activity or people who might be committing crimes mm -hmm. in those areas are higher. Um, but I think those are the same communities that are looking out and seeking assistance to know how can we empower ourselves to, because I used to live across with my guy many, many years ago that was a terror to the neighborhood. You know, he really, he, every time something happened in the neighborhood, we were looking at him because, you know, you know it was we kind of knew yeah. that it was him, but, you know, we didn't have evidence. But, you know, if you have neighbors that kind of know that guy or girl or someone who might be doing something in the neighborhood wrong, those neighbors around them, they know who that person is. And they probably want to look out for them too. They also want to get this guy arrested and put in jail because he's a real menace to society. And there are people 
in our community that uh, you know new to get, need to get an education, need to be able to stand on their own two feet, don't resort to crime or drug yeah. activity. Um, but if you get more people in uh, impoverished or socially economic uh, depressed areas that say, hey, I'm just as important as that guy over there or the one in the next village, why, my, why not us? And I think people want that. I think, I think you're right about that. There, people want a sense of security in their neighborhoods. It's just whether or not they're willing you know, to extend themselves. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, we'll take a quick break so you can eat sure. your salmon. <laughs> but I want, I want to Thank ask you. you then, what does that mean with the for the police department? Does mm -hmm. that then mean that the police department can pull back a little bit in their neighborhood patrols or does that d enhance what they do? We're speaking with the Lieutenant Governor, Acting Governor today, Ray Tenorio, James Turbio on the Neighborhood Watch Program. I think you want to come back. Some valuable information for your neighborhood. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Something to Talk About here at King's in Timoning, and we are really enjoying the food today. I appreciate, appreciate the kind folks over at King's for setting this up for us. Uh, we're talking about the Neighborhood Watch Program, an enhanced version of this, uh, where you're enlisting na actual neighbors, not just one neighbor who's looking out for everybody, mm -hmm. but several neighbors to come together and to use right. any kind of technology they can to either communicate with each other about the safety in their neighborhood or to report crimes that are occurring at the time, right? Will, Will Castro tells me we're just a few weeks away from getting the Neighborhood Watch app right. gone, I mean, loaded and, yeah. and ready, accessible. And when that happens, I think a lot of people will be very interested because, you know, my vision for using technology is, you know, a lot of people, they're just, you know, pen and piece of paper. Other people, they're just on their phone. Oh, yeah. You know, or their well, there, isn't it generational, though? Because yeah. I know some people who will probably won't do the whole app thing. Right. Uh, so, but they wouldn't mind taking pictures with a camera if they know how to do sure. it. Yeah. A camera or a smartphone or any kind of app, something yeah. that helps us. But, you know, my vision is hopefully, let's say you, you, your parents live in a different village than you do, for example, and you want to be involved in that neighborhood watch component. The whole idea, my, my hope is that you have a whole different things that you're defaulted to be involved with in the neighborhood watch. So say, you know, from Jigo to Meleso, you know, everything you want to choose to, to monitor. Let's say a police officer or a captain or a major in the police department. They want to see what's happening in the community. Well, you might just care about a couple villages, yours and your mother's. Mm -hmm. So it's Timoning and, let's say, Jigo. Okay, so fine, then you can monitor those two villages and if you see pings on those maps or if you get notices like you do with your, you know, your email, your WhatsApp when you get a, a notice or something, then you can see what's happening. It kind of alerts you about what's going on. So if you see something in your neighborhood, oh well, you go on the app, click on that, you know, kind of expand it, see what's happening, what reports were made, what's a photo of the vehicle or the video of the person maybe that was suspicious. Uh, maybe other people have chimed in saying, yeah, I saw that guy in another village before. You know, it'd be nice for people to really kind of get engaged with what's happening electronically, digitally. Yeah. And that information could be monitored and worked with the police department so they can say, hey, they got a couple reports of this guy who's, uh, you know, a couple photos in this area over in uh, Derido and he looks very suspicious. So run a registered owner on this vehicle and check him out and see if he's got any records, you know. I mean, that, that would be very helpful in really stopping or suppressing some of the crime that we have in our community. Well, the the other thing is that there are uh, there are a lot of people that have home surveillance mm -hmm. uh, cameras, systems, security systems. So uh, that, along with whatever they're, they'll be doing, a neighborhood watch, you could even remotely watch what's happening right in your now. house, right, when right. you're not home. How does this help or hinder or how does this affect the Guam Police Department from doing patrols uh, well, if you have that many people that are eyes and ears f doing a lot of that work? Th that would be great. It's like imagine if you had everybody in every village, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people in every village monitoring what's happening and they're reporting suspicious activity, taking a photo. You're just adding to the arsenal of intelligence that's available to the police officers to be able to find out who's doing what in what village. Yeah. We we're talking about cameras, you know, we we're, were talking about that in Barragata Heights. They were saying, we want to get two cameras on our streets. And I was saying, well, let's think beyond that. What happens if we just get two cameras on your street so they can see the suspicious vehicles going up or down, but down at the Route 16 intersection, you know, where it goes toward, you know, the uh, National Guard and toward Harmon, if you saw there was a cam camera over there and it said, okay, the vehicle went toward Dededo. And then you had another intersection down the road over by Airport Road where it continued to go down. So you know, continue to track that vehicle based on the information now available to a camera. 
and I'm hoping that the Neighborhood Watch program in tandem with the police department with camera systems and people who want to be involved in suppressing or stopping crime will get involved and, and kind of help our government implement the systems that will make a difference and ultimately make our community a lot safer. Tell me where, uh, James, that people who want to become involved in their communities should go. Well, first off, I mean, you're going to see us in your neighborhood you now relatively soon. I mean, as we continue to move on. And again, it's a pilot program, so mm -hmm. we're, we're learning best practices as we move along. So we're learning a lot from this experience with Barragata Heights. Uh, get what we learn from there and then move on to the next village or neighborhood. Actually, we're thinking more <coughs> neighborhood-centric village because yeah. village is such a large large area right, right. And if we're able to hit neighborhoods and have that mindset you know the more we can do but uh, to your point we have a uh, we have of course the 10 governor's office um, 475-9380 and we also have our our email address nwp at guam.gov so okay. if you have any questions uh, you want to participate hey you know, we get the question all the time, why don't you go to my neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Well, we are coming to your neighborhood. Are well, you going to every single neighborhood? Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. We're going to go <coughs> house to house, person to person, neighborhood to neighborhood, village to village. We want to get this island wide. It's going to take a long time. But in the end, we will we'll plan to and hopefully achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. So what does the uh, police department's involvement, what is it? I know the GI was part of your, mm -hmm. uh, GI Cruz, the appointed police chief uh, had right. uh, uh, some, when you guys had a news conference and you talked about right. it, what's their role? Well, their role is uh, to, to work and let them know that this is something that the police department wants to do. Uh, the commanders from each one of the precincts for the first meeting, I hope they continue to be part of that because you have to drive it from the precinct level as well. Because uh, when I was talking about our group, you know, how do we do this without putting too much of a burden on any one precinct commander? Because they got things to do every single day. So the idea was to rotate it to different areas based on um, their geography. So let's say we do one in Derido precinct area, we'll do one in Talafofo maybe, one in um, Agat, you know, in those different precinct jurisdictions, and then come back to, to uh, Barragata. And the idea is that once you get Barragata started, and let's spread that out a little bit, make it as, as pervasive as possible, spread it out throughout the entire community in Barragata, then we move on to, let's say, Barragata or Mingilao or Toto, you know, that way the precinct commander can focus and hone in on really getting that strong foothold in that community and then we don't go, you know, Barragata this week, Miguel all that week, and then pretty soon the guy is just inundated with too much time. Yeah, you know, it, it, what this does, what this also says to me is that Guam's, uh, you know, Guam's crimes are getting uh, to be more severe than we have seen them in a lot of years. I know you'll agree. We're seeing crimes here that we've never seen before. And I think that mostly is a function of connectivity. Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, I mean, everybody's connected to everything. Where back in the 70s, you know, it's word of mouth, in the 80s, it was, you know, television, radio. Now it's everywhere. We're living in the instance of now. So you're constantly knowing immediately. And there's a blurb on the news, you know, we see it on PNC, it comes up on our phone. We know what's happening. Everybody's tuned in to what's happening. Their fingers are on the pulse of the realities of our lives every single day. So I think sometimes that's part of it. But then again, you have some sensational stuff. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of sensational crimes in the past that says, oh my God, they had a home burglary invasion and people were killed. That's happened. 20, 30, 40 sure, years that, ago. Sure, that has happened. Yeah. And it was largely because of a drug trade. Right. And so and th there's, a, there's, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of that. There's a mm -hmm. lot of that. I'm, but we're really concerned that we're seeing people, not only residents that are being jumped in the parking lots, mm -hmm. or jumped right outside their homes, but the crimes against the tourists that, that it looks like people are preying on because they are easy. Right. Uh, they're easy targets. That's true. Uh, th th we have to, there's got to be, uh, or is there, what is the plan, uh, you know, to control that kind of media that eventually gets out to these destinations as we are continuing to build up the visitor uh, trade? Well, just like the DeSoto trial where you had this sensational event that happened where this guy ran over and then stabbed individuals after getting, you know, out of his car. Um, you know, that's just unheard of on Guam. Yeah. But the fact that we brought him to justice, that's enough for the society as well as our, our visitor industry. Now, if this guy had got off, then it would be probably a very different thing. Um, but also, I think there's a certain recognition that once something happens in any community, just like Japan, Japan used to be relatively crime-free. Remember that for mm -hmm. a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Now they have all kinds of crime happening. 
And I think it's a function of society growing and the number of people. And we also have a number of immigrants that are coming uh, to the island also that are, you know, resorting to these things because they don't have the wherewithal sometimes to be able to provide for themselves and the resort to preying on tourists and, and ultimately they're, they're causing uh, problems and we're dealing with the FSM government and other uh, individuals as well as uh, faith-based organizations to try to you know help the Micronesian community help the other Micronesian migrants to be able to become productive members of the community to be engaged and understand that there's a difference in the cultures but we also need to work with them to to help them get a job and help them to sustain themselves and not be living homeless. So there's a lot of compassion in our community. We care for our brothers and we want them to have a great opportunity for the future. And I think that's true whether you're coming from China or Guam or any other place. We all want to help each other, sustain each other's uh, quality of life. So the Neighborhood Watch uh, pilot program mm -hmm. is, why is it a pilot? Is it because you've introduced the technology? Well, the pilot, yeah, the yeah, okay. pilot is a new twist on things because we've kind of never had that app available yeah. before. Okay. And other communities yeah. have done it pretty well. Uh, but the pilot is that uh, what we're doing is we're taking good ideas that have been from many, many years ago, and even ones that like Will Castro launched in Barragata, as well as uh, Jonia, and I think again, a high seat had one. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go and use their you know, best practices and kind of make it an island-wide thing. Let's spread these good ideas to make it work mm -hmm. and using it in tandem with communications, with apps and uh, basically just community involvement. Uh, is there anything you want to just add real I quickly mean, before we leave? I mean, it's great to have, you know, the applications, uh, WhatsApp and all these other communication devices, but really the gist of it, and of course we have the support of, of, of the Lieutenant Governor's Office, this administration, and of course the Police Department. But ultimately, it's up to the the community yeah. uh, right. to take ownership. That's the, yeah, that's where it is going to be. Uh, people have said right after this announcement that you'll be going door to door. It smells like a campaign. Oh, it is a campaign for Neighborhood Watch. It is a campaign for political office. Of course not. Absolutely. Not. Have any aspirations to take over the head? <laughs> you know, are you, you getting your never, legs right? ready for the big long walks <laughs> during the campaign I, I, period? Uh, Chief uh, <laughs> acting uh, appointed chief uh, G.I. Cruz said when he went to the neighborhood watches uh, to the different villages, says that was a workout. Yeah, it's right yeah. in the middle. It's like four thirty to five o'clock, and we're out there walking in the sun, and it's hitting you in Berger Heights. Yeah, it's yeah. Hot. well, it's, yeah. you know, but you've done it before because you've done canvassed it many before. Times. So <laughs> I just, you know, if you're getting your canvassing legs back. <laughs> <laughs> I still got the legs. Don't worry about it. I don't need right. anybody to watch for that. He'll be ready. He'll uh, be we'll ready. help him anyway. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. I really thank appreciate so it. Much, James, thanks thank a lot for joining us today. Don't forget about the food. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see you on the radio. Thanks for joining us on Something to Talk About. Good night.